Hi everybody, thank you for clicking on my video and welcome to another missing person case. Today's case is on a little one-year-old girl named Vanessa Morales who disappeared the same day her 43-year-old mother was found dead in their home. Now, this is a more recent case from 2019 and when it first happened, it was receiving some coverage, but I haven't heard anything about it in about seven months. So I wanted to do this video to try to get the story back out there and bring more attention to it because this little girl is still missing. She has not yet been found and I don't believe police are getting very many leads right now. Christine Holloway was a teacher at the Bright Morning Star Child Care Center and it was the same daycare that Vanessa attended. So mother and daughter were always able to be together. You know, she could take Vanessa to work with her every day. And I think that's something that most mothers, you know, dream about doing. So it was such a blessing that they could always be together. Christine has been described as a very patient and kind person who loved her daughter so much and she enjoyed working with children and she loved her family and was just all in all a good person. Christine and Vanessa's father, Jose, were still together, but they were living in separate homes. I'm not sure why I couldn't find information on why they didn't share a living space, but Jose did come stay at the house with Christine and Vanessa very often. Now, from what I could find, Jose did have some history of domestic abuse from a prior relationship in 2012, but I couldn't find any information if there had been any violence or any kind of bad past or abuse or anything like that with Christine and police have said that they never received any calls from the home for them to come out there you know for any kind of problems that doesn't mean there weren't problems there just isn't any like history of it on record Christine and Vanessa were last seen on Friday November 29th which was the day after Thanksgiving, and they were seen by Christine's family. On December 2nd, Christine did not show up at work with Vanessa, and this was very unlike her. She would always show up to work, and if she wasn't going to, she would call in, but she had not, and no one was able to get in contact with her. So at 1 o'clock p.m. that day, coworkers called police and asked them to do a well check at her home. When police arrived there, they didn't notice anything suspicious, and even though no one answered the door, police just left. By that evening, when there had still been no contact made with Christine or Vanessa, her family made another call to police requesting a welfare check. Police showed up at the home around 7.30 p.m., and I'm not sure what they saw that hasn't been released, but they did see something suspicious that caused alarm, so they did forced their way into the home, and sadly, once they got in there, they did find Christine deceased. She had been brutally beaten. Little Vanessa, however, was not inside the home, and this obviously sent everyone into even another state of panic because Vanessa was always with her mother, and she was nowhere to be found. She wasn't with any other family members, and she had seemingly been taken. A silver alert was immediately issued and two days later on December 4th, it was switched to an amber alert. Now the difference between a silver alert and an amber alert is a silver alert is for any missing person, adult, child, it doesn't matter, any missing person. An amber alert is for a child under the age of 18 who is believed to be, to have been abducted and believed to be in danger. In my opinion, people seem to pay more attention to the Amber Alerts because, you know, if it's a child missing, people seem to jump into action a lot faster than if it's an adult. The community really came together to try to help find Vanessa. Family members and volunteers were handing out flyers at intersections and posting them up in businesses. People took to social media trying to get Vanessa's picture out there, trying to find her. and. People who lived in the area were switching out their porch light bulbs with red ones because red ones were to signal whoever had Vanessa that they could bring her to that home and anyone with a red bulb on their porch light would be more than willing to take her in and they could drop her off there and know that she would be safe. 
police did interview Jose after Christine's body was found, but he said he had no idea what had happened to him and seemed to be cooperating. But police did notice that his hands and arms were pretty beat up. He had scratches and marks all over him and his face was really red and swollen and it looked like he had been in a fight. And when someone goes missing, if their significant other looks like they've been in a struggle and have marks on him, on them, that's a pretty big red flag. On December 3rd, law enforcement did search Jose's home in New Haven, Connecticut. They found blood-stained wash rags, towels, and even a shirt that seemed to have blood on it. They also found two stun guns, and since he had been convicted of a felony previously, he was not allowed to own any weapons, so he was arrested for possessing those stun guns. Vanessa's mother, Christine, was laid to rest on December 11th as people were still out searching for her little girl. Police did receive a call from an employee of the Kijukation Donation Center, and this center kind of, I think it's kind of like a Goodwill, kind of, I'm not sure, but they set boxes around town where you can throw in items you want to donate, like old clothes, bags of old clothing, household items, toys, that kind of stuff. And while they were going through one of these bins, they found some stuff that was very sketchy and they contacted police and wanted to show them. They had found blood-stained items such as little kids toys, some baby clothes, and some papers that actually had Christine Holloway's name on them. These items were tested and it was found to be Christine's blood on them and not Vanessa's. Witnesses claimed to have seen Jose leaving Christine's home around the time of the murder and seen him drive in the direction of the Kijukation bins. He ended up being named a prime suspect in Christine's murder and Vanessa's disappearance on December 17th. It would take about a month and a half to arrest Jose, though. Finally, on February 7th, he was arrested and charged with tampering with evidence as well as being charged with the murder of Christine. Now, this entire time, Jose had been claiming to not know anything about Christine's murder and not know where in the world his daughter was. But once he was arrested, he claimed that he was there the night that this all took place, but that he was high on PCP and marijuana and that several men had come into the home and attacked him, killed Christine, and taken Vanessa. But if this was the case, why would you wait until you were arrested to say something like that? Why wouldn't you go immediately, right after it happened, to report it and try to save your little girl? I, that just doesn't make any sense to me and I don't understand why he thought that would even be remotely believable. They had witnesses saying they saw him leave her home shortly after the murder would have taken place. And if your girlfriend has just been murdered and your baby's gone, you're not just gonna leave the house and go about your day. A neighbor also reported that they had seen Jose leave the apartment right after police were there conducting the first welfare check. So it is believed that he was inside the apartment hiding when police were there knocking on the door. I can't help but wonder if police had been able to gain entry the first time they were there, if they would have, you know, caught Jose in the act, you know, or been able to get Vanessa. Because if Jose was there, Vanessa most likely would have been right, unless he had already given her to someone else. Jose has pled not guilty to all of these charges. There is no evidence leading police to believe that Vanessa is no longer alive. Her blood was not found at the scene of her mother's murder and it was not found on any of the items recovered from the bins. Another reason they are very hopeful is because four specific items pertaining to Vanessa are missing from the home and police are asking people to keep an eye out for these four specific items. This exact polka dotted comforter, this Eddie Bauer diaper bag, a teething ring, and her Graco car seat with the base. These are items that Christine used every day with Vanessa and these items are believed to be with Vanessa wherever she is. Please take a look at these items on the screen one more time. 
These could have been given to whomever she is with. If these items are found, police ask that you do not touch them and contact police immediately. At the time of her disappearance, Vanessa was 26 inches tall and 17 pounds. She has brown hair and brown eyes. She had already started walking and had several baby teeth when she vanished. She can talk, but I'm sure she wouldn't be able to verbalize who she belongs to or what had happened to her. It is unknown what she was wearing the day she vanished, and she will be turning to next month in September. I do believe Vanessa is out there somewhere. Investigators haven't been able to find any evidence to make them think that she was harmed in any way. And if Jose had harmed her that day, he most likely would have left her in the home with her mother. I truly hope he handed her off to someone else and that whoever has her is taking good care of her. Police have stated numerous times that they have no interest in arresting whoever has Vanessa. They simply want her brought to them and returned to her family and they want to know she's okay, you know, mostly. That's the most important thing. They want to know that she is alive and well and they do believe that she was given to someone to care for her. They believe that Jose sent her off somewhere or gave her to someone that hasn't been checked out and that that person is raising her now. Law enforcement asks that anyone that has Vanessa please bring her to a police department, a fire department, or a hospital. They have stated that they do believe she's still in Connecticut. I saw some theories online where people stated that they thought maybe she had been taken to Mexico. But, I mean, really, Vanessa could be anywhere. The FBI is offering a $10,000 reward for information that leads them to find Vanessa. The reward will be given to anyone who returns her unharmed or has specific information that leads her to being found. If you have any information on the whereabouts of Vanessa Morales, please contact the Ansonia Police at 203-735-1885 or the FBI at 1-800-225-5324. You can also leave an anonymous tip online. I will post the link to that in the description box. Please keep this story out there. I cannot believe this has not received more attention. This is one of those cases that you would think would be plastered all over the news every single day. You know, you'd think Nancy Grace would be covering it you'd think it'd be out there more because it is a child and because there was, you know, a murder involved in the circumstances of her vanishing, but it's not. So let's get this story out there. Share her flyer, which I have linked below as well. Share this video. Get this story out there where you can help get this little girl back to her family. I do think she's out there, guys. I think somebody's got her and they're taking care of her and they're probably scared to come forward, but again, police have no interest in pressing charges on this person or arresting them. They just want Vanessa to be returned to her family. They want to know she's okay. They want to know she's unharmed. If you are new to my channel, I post videos every single Wednesday on the missing person cases that need a lot more exposure. And I mean, no harm in doing these videos. I am simply trying to spread awareness and help get these cases out there. If you would like to support me, please consider giving this video a like and hitting that subscribe button. I will post my entire missing playlist up above right now if you would like to check it out, and I will see you next week. Bye.